Oh, I just, I'm just at a point in my, um, our operation, we, we're, I ran out of time. I, I was on the truck full time and trying to run a hundred head of cows and run the feedlot and doing everything by myself. And I, a new report from the CDC says suicide rates among American farmers is higher than any other occupational group. Oh, geez, over a thousand acres shy of what I would need to break even for this season. And I was just, I, I didn't know how, how the world I was even going to make cash flow this year. And so I was like, I, I got to figure something out. According to the U.S. Department of Agriculture, U.S. farmers are struggling financially as well. The average farm's income projected to be about 35% below what it was in 2013. I was just feeling, uh, honestly, just truly lost, completely lost. I really didn't know what to do. But at the same time, you knew you were made for bigger and better things. Markets haven't gotten any better. We haven't changed much. Last year, more than 2,700 dairy farms went out of business in the U.S. Spending a lot of time by myself. Um, from, you know, I'll wake up and he's gone and then... Crop prices are down across the board, um, with dairy in particular facing huge um, cuts in the price of milk such that dairy farmers are earning less for their milk than it costs them to produce it. farmers can't reach the credit that they need to operate their farm and farmers right now are, are trying to just make it through another day and they're not sure if they'll make it through the year. Many are faced with yet another tough financial forecast as corn and soybean prices remain low which means less money in farmers pockets. So loneliness is a for sure a factor. And that's just the re reality of the industry. The U.S. dairy industry is struggling. Profits have been sucked out of producers' operations. Harvest seasons, um, I was home handling everything by myself. Right. Low prices are worldwide. That's just one of the factors why dairy farmers are... We turn now to a video that is bringing attention to the struggles of America's dairy farmers. We literally work day in and day out all the time to for nothing. You gain nothing. We've gained nothing. Tribune, Kansas. These are my roots. Family still lives here. My sister and brother-in-law farm. My parents live here. My dad works for CHS. My mom works at the courthouse right over there. She's the county clerk there. So the majority of these towns are just gonna have one truck stop. That's it. He's explaining things to us, what he's doing, and I think he just it's not going to let it happen to him. He was the one that was home with us. He saw the daily struggles that we went through. Now we're rolling up on the feed yard. Just being able to organize and kind of be the one in charge meant something to me. And to have that all gone to, was really hard. So the trigger will drove today? Is it worried? Yeah. It is, even after, you know, it's been 15 years yeah. now, but still really emotional. And I know it was hard for Kevin because he had never had to do that. Work for somebody else or 
go find a job on his own or whatever. The house, right? That's the house when we first moved yeah. it in, out there. Mm -hmm. So the house that we grew up in, that's what it first was, and then added on, added on, added on over years. because cattle would come in, I'd help push them in, stuff like that. But uh, my granddad started this back in the 1950s with literally, <laughs> literally a handshake deal with a banker to get a small loan to get started and uh, built out something that was big, built out a family operation. Thing is, it was a true family. It wasn't just my granddad, it was his three sons, two daughters, all involved in the operation. My dad spent 40 years here at the feed yard building this. The guy loved feeding cattle. That's what he loved to do. That's what drove him. There was so much passion and purpose being out here and just living this lifestyle and doing this every day. Yeah, that's what he loved. It was hard for us to lose it, but He was in his 70s when that happened, so it was really hard for him, too. It's been a long time, but it's still really emotional. You felt like you put in a, you sacrificed a lot, and you put in a lot to make the business successful not only for yourself, but for your family and for the other families who were helping us out there too. And it wasn't always easy on our relationship either. So here I am at our old family feed yard, a feed yard that my dad spent 40 years of his life building. And uh, as you can tell, it's all empty. It's a wasteland. It's deserted. <sighs> it was 2005 when the financial destruction hit this place. Uh, my granddad lost a lot of money feeding cattle, fed all of his own cattle. And as most of you know, watching this video, that's when volatility started to hit the markets. We started to see a lot, you know, more, a lot more volatility in the prices and everything. Unfortunately, my granddad lost a lot of money, lost a lot of cattle, and that ended up in him losing everything. Ended up in my parents losing everything. I was with them when they had to pack up the house. The house that they raised their entire family in. I was with my parents through their transition over the next two years in the dark years. So to start from zero, back in the 50s and 60s to grow it to a 10 plus million dollar operation to pass away with nothing. I mean, yeah. Following that experience, I did what everybody does, went to college, and after college I became an ag banker and I was a loan officer. This was great for me because now I was able to put together the financial piece of why this place went under. The decisions that are being made when it comes to the financial side of these operations and honestly the things that are not being said to farmers and ranchers today by the people that are running the finances behind it. There's so many things that aren't being said, brutal truths that need to be said because people need to understand what's at risk and what I'm showing you behind me and all around this, in this wasteland, this is what's at risk. This is what's it cost for you, losing everything. I witnessed my parents go through the darkest period of their lives. 40 years that my dad worked out here ended up with nothing, all of this, gone. Because things are not being said. bank showed me, showed me what happens, showed me the decisions that are being made, the amount of money that's being put at risk, the things that just aren't being said. I was working with so many clients that were in such tight financial positions. We had record prices in 2012, everybody's making a pile of money on livestock and grain, and then prices start to roll over. And all of a sudden people aren't ready for this. They're not prepared for this. 
And I had so many difficult conversations with clients inside of the bank. And these people would sit across my desk as I'd sit there, collect my salary, you know, be safe, be comfortable. And I'd sit there and I'd look at these people and I would see the same look in their eyes that I saw in my parents' eyes. The fear, the doubt, the confusion on why is this happening to me. I've been doing this for years, for decades. Why is this happening to me? And it got to a point where I was done. I couldn't do it anymore because I wasn't solving the problem in there. I wasn't even helping the problem. Again, there were things that needed to be said. There's stuff that needs to happen. And the reality is, if we don't start talking about the real things, if you do not start facing the hard truths inside of your life, inside of your operation, inside of your business, <laughs> and just inside of doing, the same, doing things the same way you've always done them, if you don't start changing, this is what you have coming for you. This isn't a joke. This is people's lives. This is decades of hard work out here. This is generations of families that won't get to take over the family farm operation, won't get to experience this lifestyle. My kids will never get to know this because of the decisions that are made. and I, we uh, have a small family, three boys, and we have a small operation, run 30 cows. And I work outside of the farm. My wife works outside of the farm. Um, and we have a small sale every year, but uh, just mainly it was cash flow. It, it just seemed like we were always spinning our wheels. We were just stagnant. Nothing was happening. Um, and in looking at the year program, we seen it on online and looked into it, talked to you a few times, and finally it just came to fruition that needed to do something. Um, I guess I just got tired of setting the idle is what I pretty much felt like. Um, so right now, if you're resonating with this, if this message is hitting home with you, then most likely you're in a position where you're either ready to burn stuff down because you're too stressed out, the emotions are too high, the financial risk is too high, the family life and every dynamic that you're dealing with is too stressful on you, I get it. Or you're in a position where you're just losing your rear end financially, losing money year after year after year. You just see equity getting eaten away off your balance sheet. Your banker just turning out your losses again and again and again. And I share all of this with you because this is what's gonna come for you. If you don't start changing things, like this is the reality coming for you. It will not be good. It will not be easy. You will go through some of the deepest, darkest pits you've ever been in, and I witnessed that. I felt that. I was with my parents when they went through that. My dad ran this operation for 30 years, 15 to 20 employees, running a multi-million dollar operation to losing it all, two weeks later driving trash truck for the local county. Like, that's a darkness that you really don't want to experience. It. That's an identity that leaves a man. Now that I've gotten older, I really understand it. And the weight that he felt, not only that he let himself down, but he let his wife and children down too. Not because he wanted to. It's just the reality of the world that we live in. And this is what's coming for you. If you don't just change things. If you don't open up your mind. Just do it. Take the leap of faith. Yeah. It was like, oh, but. I don't regret it one bit. That it will be well worth it because in the end, it is. I mean, we find other ways to pay for things we don't need. Uh, and I feel like everyone needs this. Any farmer or rancher, they need this just to put their life in perspective of what it could really be. Yeah. I mean, I just felt the confidence boost and you know and just the knowledge that I'd gain joining your group to make the decisions to move forward and to start really scaling our operation and building what the type of operation we want to have but 
watching his confidence grow and watching him um, be like, yeah, I can do this. These are products that I believe in. These are things that I know that people out here need. And now I have the tools to help me learn how to get my message out there and how to not only better their operation, but at the same time, I'm earning a better living for my family as well. You're losing ground year after year. The bank is owning more and more of everything you have year after year, and you will end up walking away with nothing if you do not shift the way that you operate on a day-to-day -day basis and the actions that you're taking and just the way that you do things. I get home in the evening and I can spend a few hours with them and we eat dinner as a family now. And, and it's really made our connection together a lot stronger. Our relationship together is the last three and a half months or whatever it's been, I, I think is a lot better than what it, what it was before. Um, with the kids, I mean, everything. Join, it's the best thing that we've ever done. I mean, it's helped us around all, all the way around. I mean, even, even personally, I think even um, our marriage, I think we do this together as a team. You know, we're on the same page for everything, the business, it, it's the best thing we've done. Uh, I would recommend it to, to anybody. If there's, if there's one thing, it's the ability to think, the ability to take action, and the confidence to get out and do it. Yep. Um, if, you know, I pay twice as much money for anything in the program to, to have access to what we have access to. We're just so thankful that Jace has gone through what he has, and he's now willing to walk the walk and put it out there for other people to try and make their own way and and make their own lives better so that those that come behind them um, can have something to be proud of and to build on. It's life-changing. You know, there's reason that this video has come across to you. You were searching or looking um, to make some changes and this is the it's the real deal. Um, not only is it gonna give you tools for your family, it's gonna give you tools for to grow your business and to grow um, as a couple, to grow individually. And if you, you know, if you're looking for something, this, this is the thing. Me and my husband did the same thing for 10 years. And when we found this, we were like, should we, shouldn't we? And as soon as we dove in, we have never looked back. We have never questioned. This investment has paid us back, I would say, tenfold this winter alone. So you see how simple it is to connect with our community. Now we have our own network, 170 plus farmers and ranchers inside of it from all across the US. Everybody dealing with the same things, everybody coming together and talking about the real problems, the real challenges, getting clear on what exactly worked inside of their operation for the week and getting clear on where they're going, going forward in the following week, asking questions, looking for things, talking about real conversations and real challenges and real problems they're dealing with family and on the operation. And then finally coming to a place where they can actually talk about the real shit that nobody else wants to talk about around them. Inside of our network, everybody working as one. This is how simple it is. Every, rolling, rolling down the road inside of your truck and just being able to hop on and connect with other like-minded people and talk about real things, real problems, and real challenges that you're facing on a day-to-day -day basis. And getting honest feedback and clarity on how to solve them and how to keep moving forward. Because you and I both know what the cost is if you don't start taking actionable steps forward that produce the results that you want. Like people that have like grown up on farms. It's in them. It's yeah. yeah. Like that's just what they yeah. from the very beginning. That's that's what they're doing. So when I when I say that they'll go until the end, yeah. they will go until the end. Yeah. 
if you don't surround yourself with people that are talking about the real problems that you face on a day-to-day -day basis inside of your personal life and business life. I understand that we were taught, trained, and conditioned to keep them separate. You and I both know that doesn't exist. Problems in the personal life bleed into the business life. It's inarguable. So farmers needed a path. They needed a gateway. They needed a place to talk about the truth. They needed a place where somebody would be brutally honest with them, not sugarcoat everything, like they're getting from everybody in their community, because nobody wants to make them feel bad. I'm not here to make you feel bad. I'm here to awaken you, to make you aware of what's to come if things don't change. If you continue doing the same thing year after year after year, expecting different results, it doesn't happen, it doesn't exist. You have to change, you have to adapt, you have to do these things. And inside a legacy farmer, that's what we're doing. Billion dollars, that's half of what it was back in 2013. Don't just take my word for it, there's over 170 farmers and ranchers from all across the U.S. inside of our network, working together, collaborating, moving forward as one and solving these problems. Because I've made it aware to them, they're clear what's going to happen to everything they've built, the decades of work, the years of sacrifice, the fights, the arguments, the financial risks, the sleepless nights, everything. They're very clear and they're very awakened on what's going to happen if they don't change, which is exactly why they're inside a legacy farmer. I'm excited to hear about more about you. I'm excited to hear about your operation, your family. I'm excited just to get to know you. But ultimately, the biggest thing that I'm excited about is the decision that you make. Whether or not you're making the decision and the commitment to start changing things, to start doing things differently, to change everything about everything you were taught to believe growing up, because that's the shifts that we're making. People are transforming inside of our network. They're transforming how they operate on a day-to-day -day basis. They're transforming their relationships with their families. And ultimately, they're doing what we're all here for, which is to build the legacy that they want, the real one, that can't be taken away from you because of things that you don't control, like the weather, like the government, like prices. People are taking control. And then we're providing the training, the framework, the accountability and the clarity of the step-by-step -step process they have to go through to get to where they want to go. Control and protection. That's all we're talking about. And that's what we all want. Because everything that you and I do is for the generations that follow. Let's not forget that. I guess to, to really know their business and to stay in touch with what's going on especially on the financial end of it. And the hardest part to face is that, you know, my kids will never get to enjoy this, my nephews will never get to enjoy this, my nieces will never get to experience this. And these were a lot of the fun years of my life just being raised on the farm. Really, it's pretty hard looking at it and seeing it amount to nothing. Because it was a lot more than just money that went into it. Like, there was a lot of pride the work, the decades, um, just commitment, man. And a lot of people, they don't have it, but you do. That's why you're watching this. That's why you connect with all this, I get it. Like you understand what's at risk. You understand the amount of work it takes to create this and to build this lifestyle that you want for, for you and the kids going forward and the generations going forward, I get it. Like that's probably what I miss the most about all this, is it was real. It was fun, it was good times. But God obviously had a different plan for us, and a different plan for me. Maybe it was his purpose, or his plan, to make it my purpose to awaken you to share the story, to share what's going to happen, to share what could happen to you if things just don't start changing. Because all the family memories, all the, the real stuff that you're building, what you're building for, the years of work ethic that you're putting into this, 
like the real stuff, not just the ego of having oh, a big operation, I farm X amount of acres, but because you want to leave it. You want to build something that the next generation can take over that they can feel the pride that you have. <sighs> and just be proud too. You know, a lot of what you're doing right now, you're doing it because one, you want your parents to be proud of you, but two, when your kids take it over, you want them to be the ones saying, yeah, my, my parents built this, my dad built this. Like that's, let's be honest, that's what really, really drives you. That's what drives me. I don't care what business you're in. If you're an entrepreneur just trying to build your own thing and you're taking all the risk, you're working just a relentless number of hours and endless number of hours. Like you're doing it because of that and I get it and I understand it. My dad did the same thing, I'm doing the same thing for my kids. And the thing is, is right now you have the opportunity to leave something like this behind. My opportunity already left me.